An abused, poor, and illiterate black woman from rural Mississippi, Maggie Comer, overcame countless obstacles to make her dream for a better life a reality for both herself and her four children. Dr. James Comer shares the truly inspirational story of his mother in his newest book, Maggie's American Dream. And let me tell you that Dr. Comer is the Maurice Falk Professor of Child Psychiatry at the Yale University Child Study Center and the Associate Dean of the Yale School of Medicine. And it's a delight to meet you, Jim. And Thank I feel you. I can nice call you that. Yes, I feel do. I know a lot about you. <laughs> what was it like for Maggie growing up at the turn of the century in rural Mississippi? Well, it was very difficult, but uh, she was unstoppable. Uh, she decided very early as a young child that she wanted conditions different than the one she experienced, and uh, she was going to make that happen. Her experience was horrific, not yes. unlike um, Alice Walker's writing in The Color Purple. Her yes. stepfather was very much like that, that Danny Glover character. That's right. She lost her father by lightning when she was five years of age, and because they were sharecroppers and the children were young, they couldn't take care of the farm. And the cruel stepfather then took over the family, he was also a bigamist, and had another family. Uh, moved them to uh, Memphis, and they lived in shacks. Uh, they moved from place to place. Uh, they were abused by the stepfather. Uh, uh, it was terrible conditions, and she ran away when she was 16. You and, and your three siblings together collectively, I've been saying this throughout yeah. the show because it's so remarkable, yeah. have 13, is that yeah, right? It's actually, it's five of us because my father had a daughter. Okay. It's the five of us. 13 mm -hmm. degrees between right, you. Right. Education was very important to your right. mother. Why did she break the cycle rather than repeat it? So many people repeat it. Yes. She, because she decided early she wanted something different for herself, I believe that she had a good sense of self that grew out of that first five years with her father. And then she bounced off of her cruel stepfather. She hated him so much. She said that anything you are, I want the opposite of, and I stand for the opposite of. And she set out to do that for herself. I think she was able to identify with people in her neighborhood who were achievers. Now, you were telling me that although there was terrible segregation, yes. there was interaction between the, the white rich, the white poor, the black better off and the black That's poor, because right. there were certainly no black rich in Mississippi, and we can all agree on that, right? right? right. But there was interaction that, that helped her see what might be possible. That's right. Uh, there, there was a, a wealthy white woman next door that they used to pick peanuts with, and uh, she used to go into her house and say, she'd look at conditions and she'd say, That's what I want for myself. And, uh, and also there were well-off blacks who did the same thing. And I think that had a lot to do with it. But also I think that, that propulsion from her reaction to her stepfather really helped in, in, in saying, I want something different. Um, she it wasn't easy for her at all. But no. meeting your father, yes. who was a very gentle, right. patient man, you and write. And tough. And tough. But <laughs> he said, if you wait and work, it, yeah. it'll happen. That's right. And she did that. That's right. Uh, he was very important in all of our lives. He helped her grow, learn, uh, become a successful, independent person. He was a very secure man who allowed her to grow and helped her grow and really helped all of us grow. Uh, he really didn't demand anything of us other than being good people. My mother demanded achievement, high level achievement, and that combination was very good. Your mother worked as a domestic and an yes. elevator operator. Your father died in right. intolerable working conditions in right. the steel mills of Indiana. Right. And you lost him when you were young. That's right. He was sick from the time I was 10 uh, and really died when I was 20. But all that period he was sick and my mother had to really hold the family together during that difficult period. How did know. she do that? Uh, <laughs> to earn enough to put you all through college. Well, we worked in steel mills, but she also managed that. You know, there was, on one occasion, uh, there was a recession in the summer, and men were lined up around the steel mills uh, who couldn't get jobs. They were all in line trying to get jobs. And I came home, and I went out, and I came back, and I said, it's impossible. I can't get a job. My mother picked up the telephone. She called the personnel officer and she talked him into giving me a job. Yeah. Well, how was your mother different than what we were describing earlier in the show when we talked about the kind of obsessive compulsive love that, that really doesn't teach children independence? What did your mom do? And, and bring in your own psychiatry in your, <laughs> you know, here. Yeah, she loved us, but she expected us to achieve. And that was the part of it. And, and she really sent us out there to achieve. Now, if we had difficulty, and we did because uh, the racial incidents at Indiana University almost destroyed me. Uh, uh, I really had a very difficult time. And I remember uh, on one occasion where I just couldn't figure out what was going on. I was confused and so on. My mother said to me, you know, 
uh, we want you to be successful, but your health is more important. And now that was a very important message because I then was able to overcome all of those feelings and so on because I realized that they cared about me more than anything else. And then I was able to go back and achieve. How much of your mother's intuition and knowledge, even though she has never really learned to read and write, am I, am I right? Just barely writes. Uh, how much of that do you bring to your own practice? <laughs> <laughs> a great deal. I, I became aware of how much I really <laughs> bring. When I was interviewing my mother for this book, and on one occasion I you know, was talking to her about child rearing, and it sounded so much like my own work, and I've written a child-rearing book. Uh, it sounds so much like my own work. I said, wait a minute, has she been reading my book? <laughs> <laughs> or writing it. <laughs> then yeah. it occurred to me that I had been reading her book, uh, that I had learned from her, and that so many of my ideas really are from her. When you began this book tour, your mm -hmm. mom was present. Yes. What happened there? Well, she was very, very pleased, and as I left, she said to me, you know, this is the greatest day of my life. Isn't that special, yeah, that yeah. you could give her that? Yeah, it's very And you've nice. given your own children a lot of those values, haven't you? Yes, I have. I'm very proud of my uh, two children. You've uh, never, you've, what, what do you expect of them? I don't ask anything of them other than that they be good people. Uh, but at the same time, they are very high-level achievers themselves. Uh, my son's a, a story analyst for Columbia Pictures, and my daughter's an actress, and they're both doing very well. We're proud of them. Would you agree that it's about time that we all credited our mothers with <laughs> our beginnings well, that, you know, a little that's bit more? A, I think it's very important to do. We like, especially in this country, to talk about what we've accomplished as individuals. Yeah. You know, We really are the product of our childhood experience. We're the product of lots of school teachers. Okay. We're the product of what the society contributed to education. There are so many things that go into allowing us to achieve. We ought to acknowledge that. I agree. I could do the same thing about my mom, Jim. We have that in common. She was okay. a great lady. Here you go. This is a wonderful, wonderful book, a real inspiration. Maggie's American Dream, written by Maggie's son, who knew her best. And I want to thank you for writing it. Well, thank and you. I mean that. Thank it's a you. pleasure to know you, Dr. Thank James you. Comer. My pleasure.